Hey guys, welcome back to Vio Essentials. How's it going today? Very exciting video as we're here to talk about the development of the Meta Quest 3, more specifically about the lenses, which is frigging awesome. All right, let's dive right into the actual news itself. Here we go. So Meta Quest 3 comes with Quest Pro Super Lenses. Ooh, super Lenses. Now, of course, Meta Quest have not unveiled all the details about the Meta Quest 3. They only more or less let us know the price and also they let us know as of when they were going to release it. Even though the actual date itself, we're not quite sure. They'll let us know at Meta Connect in September the exact date. But nice to see some, some tidbits here and there, some news coming in, filtering out to keep the momentum going. So the lens of the MetaQuest Pro are a game changer apparently, and they will find their way into the less expensive MetaQuest 3. And by the way, we were very surprised that the price of the MetaQuest 3 was only gonna be around 500 US dollars. Perhaps the one with 128 or 256, um, you know, gigabyte of memory, could be more expensive, could be 600 or 700, who knows? Maybe 500 is purely the base price, not quite sure, but we were quite surprised it was gonna be that price as we all thought in the industry as what they had rumored before would be around 800 or potentially $900. All right, let's go back inside of the article. Too much seems to confirm by Meta. Quest support on Reddit, one user posted their, their with the deadline, excuse me, finally tried Quest Pro, the lenses are unbelievable. Does the Quest 3 have these exact lenses? Uh, he said he had never seen such clarity in VR, which is amazing. So let me just go to this article here, as I think it explains a little bit better. In a Reddit reply to VR, the person uh, that we're talking about is called Nikolai underscore Volkov88. By the way, it's not the first time I've heard this name, so it's very possible that Meta play games amongst themselves and do a whole Q&A amongst themselves. Yeah, right, it's like it's a, it's a random person, right? Okay, uh, confirms that the Quest 3, same optics as the Quest Pro. However, it will also boast the highest resolution to date, meaning it will pack more pixels into each eye hole than the expansive, expensive excuse me, AR headset. Now, first of all, it's not AR headset, it's a mixed reality headset. Let's make that very clear. AR is augmented reality, which means you use your phone or a headset, but you can't actually interact with the objects there. You can only see it maybe, or maybe you can pinch and zoom your screen, something like that, but you can't click on something. Mixed reality is extended reality, which is XR, which means you can actually click on something and this, whatever, 3D objects will animate or do something or something will happen within the actual environment as well. All right, so that feature is attributed to its shiny new Snapdragon CPU, which is apparently twice as fast. So actually the Snapdragon is still pretty much an Android phone, by the way, but uh, I believe that the CPU that they'll be using will be slightly better than the Snapdragon uh, version that they're currently using in the Quest 2 and also the Pico 4. It won't be the next, next super gen, it's just, a you know good good next gen but not the super super gen if i am to understand things correctly so meta quest support said hey that is a great question we certainly understand the importance of having all the information you can gather before making a purchase especially when it comes to choosing your vr headset please allow us to help you get pointed in the right direction we cannot divulge any information of course that has not become public but we can certainly let you know about the information that has been released the quest 3 will have the pancake uptake like quest pro however there will be a noticeable difference as the Quest 3 will come with our highest resolution to date. Now, I think that is very, very important. Let me just show you what pancake lenses look like, by the way. All right, here we go. So we have a, I'm going to show you the actual Pico 4. So I'm not quite sure if you can see properly, but, bas but basically the lenses itself, let me just remove the uh, facial interface, Ugh, like a savage. Basically, the lenses are very, very flat. That is what pancake lenses are, is that basically the lenses are extremely flat. So the surface around the lens will be very clear. Let me just show you very quickly in this video that we did with the Pico 4. So the Pico 4 was the first standalone VR headset uh, to actually introduce 
Pancake Lens Technology. And you can see we're inside of Virtual Desktop here, which is a software that enables you to stream directly to your PC VR um, apps, either directly and you can play in VR or you can be immersed in a 3D virtual uh, environment that they provide you and then you can remotely use your PC and control your PC within the uh, virtual desktop app which is absolutely amazing and you can see the clarity is really amazing and also the fact that with Pancake lenses uh, the actual circumference of clarity around the lenses themselves are also comparatively to Fresno are very very different because you don't have any warping happening around the actual edges. Although to be honest with you, I did other videos which include these ones here about DPVR. And I do suggest that you go and check out this video here because uh, I actually did some through the lens and they're using Fresno lenses. And I have to say that DPVR are doing an amazing job with those lenses, considering the fact that they're not uh, pancake lenses, they're Fresno, which means they're more rounder and they have ridges around the actual lenses. Now with HP Reverb G2 and every other VR headset I've tried, including the uh, HTC Vive Pro 2, the PlayStation 2, there's a lot of blurriness going around the actual edges of the, uh, of the, actual, uh, of the actual headset. But with the actual, uh, with the DPVR, let me just show you, very, there we go. You see the DPVR here has Fresno lenses, which are not pancake. And you can see all the ridges here is actually very, very clear. I mean, look at the clarity here. It's really, really amazing in terms of what you can see. And the only reason why it's a little bit blurry here is because the phone and the angle of the actual phone. But in fact, if you look even as I go in, there is no blurriness. It's just absolutely amazing. So, you know, lenses, lens technology are getting much better. And also let's not forget that uh, Oculus are fighting against Pico who potentially will be releasing a Pico 5. So people need to be sure that the Quest 3 is the one they must go to even when the Pico 5 will come out. Because if the Pico 5 is so much better than the, than the Quest 3, then of course it might people might jump ship, right? I mean, a percentage of people might jump ship, of course, not 100% of the people, but let's say that out of a thousand people or 100,000 people who have a Quest 2, may decide or oh, then go to Quest 3 and then Pico 5 gets released, let's say the same year, why not? Then, you know, maybe 10%, even 10,000 people is good enough to jump ship. And then those 10,000 people will recommend their friends and their family, which could transcend into 50,000 or 100,000 more sales, right? So Oculus Meta have to be very careful as to the strategy that they use, making sure that the technology that they release is prime time technology that's going to last two, three years, and that would be better than the Pico 5 in terms of graphic resolution. All right, let's go back to the article itself. So, and we'll have new, snap, new Snapdragon chipset, as we just spoke about, which will be able to deliver twice the graphical performance as its pre predecessor predecessor wow twice more well that's that's pretty amazing to be honest with you uh sorry let me just go back so this makes for smoother performance and more defined details let's not forget that it will also have color pass through with 10x more pixels and a depth sensor okay guys so that means that basically when we're inside of mixed reality you will really have almost like a lifelike uh, experience. So what, like if you're playing Dimeo, you're playing board games, or you're playing games in mixed reality, it should by right get rid of the jitter which currently has. And also by right, the mixed reality should be smooth in that case. That means that whatever you see in real life is all smooth. There are no bubbles or pockets of something that distorts or graphic issues. It should all be smooth and not distorted. So everything you see in real life should by right be the same scale in mixed reality, which means that mixed reality, again, for those who who are new to this, means you can see the real world plus the 3D object within that real world, and you can interact with the 3D object within that real world environment. Using the, of course, the headset. We could go on and on, but here is a link to give you more information. We hope that this has helped your question. So let's go to the link and check out what exactly they put there. All right, so something's not right, apparently. Something is missing. Um, manage cookies, of course, I always disable all my cookies and everything like that. So Meta Quest 3 launches later this year, plus lower price prices and improvement for Quest 2. So, okay, well then basically they just speak about more or less the same thing. Let me just 2x here. 
So Snapdragon twice, yes, okay, they said that already. Um, boom, 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 boom. So no, so so they're also using, by the way, space, the word spatial, which I think is very, very interesting. As you guys know, Mac, Apple are the ones who are using, not metaverse, they, no one in the industry is using the word metaverse because of meta. They use the word spatial computing, which has been defined by Apple. Spatial computing is now being used as a means to explain to people that you're using a mixed reality environment to do your productivity. So I think that is very, very interesting that meta are also using the word spatial uh, understanding, let you interact with virtual content and the physical world simultaneously, which is mixed reality, creating limitless possibilities to explore. Now you can play a virtual board game on your kitchen table with Dimeo, decorate your living room with virtual art courtesy of painting VR, or dive into a fully immersive world to do things that are simply not possible otherwise. So basically, and here's a picture of Dimeo, by the way, guys, for those who have played it with the Quest Pro, let me know in the comments because it does look freaking amazing, to be honest with you. Um, so apparently they're going to have Quest 3 is taking a step further with dual 4 MP RGB color cameras. Okay, so there'll be two, a depth sensor, more accurate representation of your play space, and 10x more pixels in pass-through compared to Quest 2. So guys, that is absolutely amazing. I mean, come on. It's only going to be $200 more or $100 more. It can't be $100 more than the Quest 2. It's not possible. So the Quest 2's price is poof, going to have to be slashed or I don't know, something's gonna have to give here because that is pretty, pretty amazing for 500 bucks if that is the level of performance that is gonna come. What do you think? Leave a comment below, guys. So let's go back to the article. Uh, in other words, Quest 3 is our first mass market offering to deliver both cutting edge VR and MR experiences, so mixed reality in a single device, setting a new benchmark benchmark, excuse me, for future headsets. So they really are going head to head with Apple, of course, although they will be catering to a different market. Now, apparently the headset is 40% lighter uh, than the actual current Quest 2. So this is the render of the Quest 3. Uh, so 40% slimmer, excuse me, not lighter, uh, but it should be lighter, of course, as well by hopefully 20 or 30%. Uh, okay, so thanks to the tracking technology, we dropped the outer tracking rings. So the controllers feel like more natural extension of your hand. So of course, for the actual controllers, there will be no rings around, none. Just like the Quest Pro controllers, exactly almost the same, but no cameras inside of the controller. So that is a very interesting technology that they are offering here for the Quest 3, of course. So here's a picture of the actual controllers. And I did ask Meta when, uh, after they had done the video, uh, you know, hey, I noticed there is no cameras on the controller, so it's good to have the confirmation, of course. Of course, they'll have the best library, um, you know, that money can buy for sure. And the Quest 2 at the moment is at 299 USD for the 128 uh, and 349 USD for the 256, which you can go and purchase, by the way, at Best Buy. I'm not quite sure if this price is the same price in the UK or in other parts of Europe. Do drop a uh, comment below. Let me know below in the comments how much they cost now a Quest 2 in the EU or in Canada or you know in other parts in the UK or, or other parts of the world. Let me know in the comments below. And you know it's 300, 300 US dollars. I mean I even dropped a tweet about this because I saw on Best Buy it's only 299. Guys, do you think it's worth the price? Would you get a Quest 2 at this late game of the stage? late stage of the game or would you be more willing to save your 200 bucks and in six months time i think it's about six months um you know to purchase the quest 3 let me know in the comments below or whether you still think it's worth getting the quest 2 maybe for your friend or another family member if you have it now so you can play together is it priced reasonably for you is it still too high is it worth 300 bucks or not leave a comment below love to get your feedback guys uh so let's just finish things up let's wrap things up so uh, basically, that's, I think, about it, to be honest with you. So it will be revealed later this year at Connect, as we all know. So, yeah. So, guys, do make sure to smash the likes if you like these time-sensitive uh, new reveal videos. So you let me know this is what you want. And also to help, of course, to grow the VR Essentials community so we get more members into VR Essentials. And, guys, by the way, I'm probably the only youtuber or youtube channel that has not featured the quest 2 and that's because we have our reasons but i will be bringing the quest 3 to the channel simply because we need views we need to educate people and you know hopefully through educating people with the quest 3 we can then 
expand on that. And of course, because I don't only talk about Quest 3, right? I talk also about the Pico. I also talk about the DPDR E4. I talk about the HP Reverb G2. So you can go and check out all those various different videos on the channel, which are all, let me just go back, which are all here, guys. So we have so many, so many different channels, so many different videos about Pico, about HP, about DPDR, about so many different things, not just, you know, of course, uh, Quest. So, you know, at the end of the day, guys, do go and check out all the various different videos that might be helpful for you. All right, until next time, take it easy. Hope you today enjoyed the video. Hit the notification bell after you subscribe. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye for now.